Hello and welcome to Beginning Engineers. Today I'm going to be talking about total productive maintenance. Love your machines. I'd also like to give a shout out to Victor Leon MX. He recommended this video, so thanks Victor. So what is total productive maintenance? Total productive maintenance, also known as TPM, is a system of maintaining and improving the integrity of production and quality systems through the machines, equipment, processes, and employees that add business value to an organization. And that definition is straight from Wikipedia. Although you can also say the main focus of TPM is on keeping machines running in their best condition to avoid costly repairs and downtimes. TPM goes hand in hand with Total Quality Management, TQM, because it requires commitment from everyone in the business. Whereas TQM is kind of a more broad overview of a quality system and the way a company should run, TPM is very similar in that it empowers employees and has a very direct focus with certain aspects. TQM is more of a system approach. TPM is a lot more focused on the equipment. Let's get a bit more specific. TPM aims to increase overall equipment effectiveness, OEE, which is comprised of three main parts. OEE is equal to performance times availability times quality, and it's measured in percentage points. So 100% is perfect. 0% is the worst. That would be your machines are never running. But 100% is kind of that abstract perfect you're always going for. In reality, 85% is considered amazing, best in class, whereas 65% is a bit more realistic for a good company. Maybe not necessarily that good, but definitely more of an average. So each metric, we can break them down. Performance, you start at 100% with all three of these parts. You subtract out any time you're running at a reduced speed. Then you also subtract out the percent of the time you're at a minor stop. That will give you your total percent performance. So if you're running at a reduced speed and that slows you down 10% of your total time, you subtract 10% for running at a reduced speed. If you're stopped for a whole hour, and let's say that's an eighth of your day, then you would subtract out 12.5% for the performance as well. Your availability again starts at 100% then you subtract your percent of the time you're broken down. The machine's not available if it's broken down. Then you subtract your percent product changeover. So that's an interesting one you might not think of right away. If you're changing your equipment to run a new part, that's time it's not available. Even though you might think it's necessary, and it may be, you can probably find ways to make it quicker to reduce that product changeover time. Then the last component of OEE, quality. So 100% minus your startup rejects. So this is something you'll commonly hear from maintenance. They'll say, to start up the machines and really get them running, your first few parts are wasted. Well, think about it. It takes time to make those parts. So you have to subtract that out from 100%. Then throughout the day, as you're running rejects, think about each part that's rejected. That took time to make. So can you see how this really begins to become a comprehensive system? If you improve your quality and focus on TQM, you'll have less rejects and you'll have more time, which will increase your OEE, a component of total productive maintenance. It all really begins to tie together. So what do we do about all these numbers? The numbers that we calculate for our equipment. Well, as with all things in process improvement, Start with the low-hanging fruit. So look at the best combination of your worst problems that are also the easiest to fix. And of course, as with so many things in process engineering and engineering in general, there are guidelines to help you. Principles to help you reduce the subtracting factors. Focused improvement, autonomous maintenance, planned maintenance, quality maintenance, cost deployment, early equipment management, training and education, safety, health, environment. So let's break these principles down. Focused improvement. Understand what you are maintaining and why. Do we even need to make this repair? What is the benefit? What functions of the machine do we really care about? 
Is it worth the repair or should we buy a new piece of equipment? Sometimes it is really worth considering if you should buy a new piece of equipment. And it's good to be critical about what you're doing. Don't just blindly repair things if they don't have a good benefit. Look at the value you're getting from that machine and the cost of the repair or the cost of the upkeep. Next, we have autonomous maintenance. Build systems that help maintain themselves so you can have automated weld tip cleaning versus human maintenance. So I worked in a weld facility where people had to clean the weld tips. Sometimes people would forget or people wouldn't do the best job. So that allowed dirt to get into the whole factory more often. Compare that to a facility where the welding machines automatically clean themselves, much cleaner. There are a lot of other examples of automated maintenance that machines can do or automated cleaning so that maintenance doesn't have to occur as often. But a really cheap and great way to have, quote, autonomous maintenance is to have a set, dedicated schedule that your operators stick to, whether that's a cleaning schedule, a part change-out schedule, or just a general inspection schedule. This will really help ensure that your machines stay in great operating condition even longer. Another great point here is that this will increase operator ownership of their equipment. Have you ever worked with a tool maker or someone who's on a machine very often? Think about how protective they are of their equipment. They keep it in great condition, and because of that, they're going to make sure it works for as long as possible at an optimal performance level. And of course, to keep your equipment in great condition, you will need to do planned maintenance. So just like with your car or with a house, doing small, repetitive upkeep can significantly extend the life of your equipment and thus make it cost less for your business. Do small things more often to push off or altogether prevent the large costly repairs. And quality maintenance. If you decide to fix or upgrade something, going back to focused improvement, knowing what to improve or fix, put the care, effort, and money required to do so. Really do a cost-benefit analysis of the cheaper solution versus the more expensive solution, and really see which is better when all factors are considered. I'm sure almost every engineer has that horror story where they do an analysis and they make a recommendation of the equipment needed to management. Management decides to spend less money and get something that's not as good not what the engineer recommended. And because of that, it either breaks down sooner, doesn't function properly, or slows down production. You can avoid these things by buying the proper equipment in the first place. So make sure you really think about all the costs associated with something. Then you have cost deployment. Break every process down into its smaller steps. So for example, first cut something, then bolt it, then glue it, etc and understand the loss and cost of each step. So don't just think your process is one giant thing. You can really focus on which areas would be more cost effective to maintain and improve. Cost deployment could really be its own video, so I won't go too in depth into it. You also have early equipment management. Ensure that your equipment is properly maintained from day one and all value added additions are in place. This helps production reach regular production speeds and quantities faster. So really, put the effort into setting up your machines properly right away. Don't run your machines at half capacity or half speed from day one. That's just going to be an added cost to production. And of course, like you see in so many frameworks, training and education. Train operators and maintenance to have the skills necessary to implement TPM. It is those who work with the machines the most that will often generate ideas. And this really goes back to TQM, where you really want the whole workforce to be knowledgeable, trained, and involved. And the final TPM principle, safety, health, environment. Maintain a safe environment to promote worker health. A clean environment can also help promote many of the other principles of TPM. If you're in a dirty environment, who really wants to maintain your equipment? And keeping your employees safe will ensure that they can work at the company for a long time and continue contributing great ideas and maintaining the equipment. Thanks for watching this video on TPM. I hope you now have a better idea of how to maintain 
and improve the integrity of your production and quality systems through the maintenance of your equipment. These are some pretty basic principles, but if you begin applying them, you will really see some improvements. If you like this video, please subscribe. I have dozens of other videos on great engineering topics. Have a great day.